Welcome to Digital Storytelling and Presentations Using Web 2.0 Tools, Session 1. What is Digital Storytelling? Digital Storytelling is using a computer-based tool or tools to tell a story. Digital stories will contain a combination of images, text, narration, video clips, music, and other audio features. As with traditional storytelling, digital stories focus on a specific topic. What is different is that you are telling a story using a digital tool. Digital storytelling does place emphasis on technology but it is not a new practice. It has been around for quite some time. You may be wondering who uses digital storytelling? Well, anyone can use digital storytelling. Depending on the tool that is used, a digital story can be created by a novice with technology all the way up to someone who is a tech expert. Teachers can use digital stories to introduce a topic to students, to help engage students in curriculum that already exists. Students can use digital storytelling for any number of projects in any number of content areas. Artists create digital stories to express themselves artistically. Advertisers if you think about it, are telling digital storytellers with their commercials. If you go to websites and research digital storytelling, I'm sure you'll find sites that might talk about seven steps of digital storytelling or five. This is not the Bible of digital storytelling. This information is from a website that you will be looking at for your assignment that I found to be the most useful and informative. So with that, when you think about the eight steps of digital storytelling, it's really not surprising at all. You of course have to come up with an idea in the first place. And depending what the digital storytelling activity is, you may want to have your kids give you the idea, you may be giving your students the idea, you may be giving your students a choice of numbers of ideas to go for. The second step is important, of course, research. Just like any project students would be doing, they would be researching the topic of their choosing. This is great because you can get into all the information literacy skills as well. Then the students need to write a script, or if you're creating a digital story, you need to write a script. And the script can come in different forms. It could be in an outline form. It could be a real full bone paper script. It depends on the project. The next step is very important for students, storyboarding it. When students storyboarding it frame by frame, or depending what tool you're using, section by section or slide by slide, they will get a real sense of what they need to have on each storyboard slide and how their whole project is going to look. Please make sure to review the Create Storyboards link on the website you will be reviewing for the assignment to get a better understanding. Then you need to gather your media, whether it's images or music or videos. This is the part in the project where you discuss with students digital citizenship in terms of copywriting and plagiarism. So you have many opportunities to talk about digital literacy outside of just presentation skills. Skills students need. Then, of course, you got to put it all together in whatever digital tool you choose or your students choose to use. And this class is about showing you some choices you have for digital tools. Then of course you need to share it or your students need to share it. And the digital tools that I will be showing you all have the ability to allow you to share your digital story. And as with any project, you want to reflect on the project. So maybe students are giving each other feedback 
or a student receives teacher feedback, or you receive feedback from your students about something that you've presented to them. And then reflect on what you could have done better, what was good about it, and it'll help you improve for the next time, as within any project that you do. Now, digital storytelling can be used outside of the classroom, but I want to talk a little bit about digital storytelling in the classroom. As I stated before, any subject can be used for digital storytelling, and you will be looking at some examples of digital stories to get an idea of what people use them for. You might think the digital stories are only for certain age kids, but any age of student can tell a digital story. It just depends on what tool you have them. You obviously don't want to use a very complex video creation tool with kindergartners, but there are some very simple basic tools out there that kindergartners can use to create a digital story. I recommend for younger students to possibly have them work in groups. For teachers, digital storytelling can be used to present new material. It catches a student's eye, gets them excited about what they're going to learn about, instead of just standing up there and lecture, lecturing them. You can also enrich your concurrent lessons. If you want to emphasize a point, or once again, draw attention and engage students in information you've already presented or information you have lessons on and you want to perk them up and shake things up a bit in your classroom. Another good thing for digital storytelling is to make abstract concepts more concrete. Students today are very visual learners and if you can give them a visual of something in the form of an analogy or a compare contrast that can get a kid to wrap their head around an abstract concept, digital storytelling is great for that. When you're using digital storytelling with students, I want to warn you, don't just say, here, go make a digital story. You need to show them examples. That's always very helpful. And you have to teach the process. So those eight steps that we discussed prior are very important so kids know it's not just about, oh, going to the computer and making a fun tool. It's about the whole process, the idea, the research, the storyboard, the gathering of the media, so on and so forth, because that's the essence of digital storytelling. There are many benefits of digital storytelling. Obviously, it taps into students' creativity. Instead of saying, hey, write a research paper, or even do a basic PowerPoint presentation, different tools offer different avenues for students to explore their own creativity. It te teaches deep research skills if it is done properly, and you follow the steps, and you emphasize the importance of research. Besides the research skills, you will get into digital literacy skills such as information literacy, copyright, plagiarism, fair use, how to evaluate a website to know if the material is valid. All important skills for students in this 21st century. When working with storyboards, it will help students organize themselves. If you're doing group projects, it helps with collaboration skills. Whether you work individually or in groups, you can do peer editing and have kids, not just you editing the projects, have students edit the projects. So there's another form of collaboration. And publishing. You can publish the digital stories to different audiences depending on the tool. And that way, students get an authentic audience. And even depending on the tool, could possibly get outside feedback if that is desired. There are a number of resources on the web for digital storytelling. These five resources you will need to review thoroughly to complete the assignment for this session. 
These links are included on the document in the Digital Storytelling and Presentation Resources folder where you found the link to this video on a document called Links for Session 1. So you don't have to worry about writing them down. I'm going to show you the sites. The first site has multiple links that you're going to be using. This is the, one of the articles you need to use for what is digital storytelling. Please review this article. When you are learning about how to and you want to learn more, here is the article you're reading about writing a script, getting started. These are the eight steps that are referred to more in depth. And if you want more information, you can refer to this article, Eight Steps to Great Digital Storytelling. When, if you want to learn more about creating storyboards, you can check out this link about storyboards. So this website, Educator Uses of Digital Storytelling, is an important one. The About Digital Storytelling is the article for the assignment. The how-to gets more into the nitty-gritty to learn about the different pieces parts. It also shows you places to record and edit audio if you want to get that fancy, where you can find royalty free music. And here are two options of digital storytelling tools other than ones that I cover in the course. So this is more informational for you and your students. Then there's educational materials which is also information for you. There's a link that has lesson plans. There's a link that talks about evaluation and assessment so you can learn more about evaluating and assessing. If you want to know more about copyright and educational fair use, there's information about copyright and fair use. All important things to know and discover and learn about digital storytelling. Then there is a link for example stories, because I talked about saying, okay, find examples for your students. You can find them right here. And even over on the story side where it says featured stories, you can look by different categories so you can find different examples to give your students. And the last link to Edtopia is the other article that you are to read for your assignments. After reading the assigned articles on digital storytelling, the one from the main webpage about educator uses of digital storytelling, and the one from Edutopia, write a reflection paper on how digital storytelling could be integrated into the classroom. Include what are the important factors this must be considered in order for students to create and produce quality digital stories. You'll write your reflection and turn it into Edmodo, on the small group page for digital storytelling and presentations, assignments, and final projects. You can click on Turn In and you can turn it in one of the following ways. You can write it up in a Word document and attach it. You can create a Google Doc if you're a Google user and share the document with me. Make sure you do that. And you can either just type in, I share the Google document with you, in the text box where you can turn in in Edmodo, or you can copy and paste the link to that Google Doc as well. The third way is just to simply click on Turn In and type your reflection straight into Edmodo. It is your choice, whatever is easiest for you. Remember, all the links you need to refer for the articles and all the resources for you for digital storytelling are in the document titled Session 1, Digital Storytelling Resources, and it's in your folder in the main groups folder where you found this video.